welcome to In the Studio at Davis Media Access. My name is Autumn Labbe Renault, and I'm ho your host today for this segment. Uh, be sure to catch the replays of this show and other In the Studio episodes on DCTV Channel 15 on the Comcast system in Davis, 10 a.m. Uh, weekdays, and also on Menu 99 on AT&T's UVerse system. And really, be sure to check out our complete archive at dctv.davismedia.org. We have In the Studio stretching back quite a ways, and they're, they're a great encapsulation of uh, what makes Davis Davis and what's going on here. Today, I'm really pleased to have with me my guest, David Loofborough from Sac Sings, and that is the Sacramento Chorale Festival, and it's coming up April 23rd and 24th. Welcome, David. Thank you. So glad to have you here today. Yeah. The event is produced by the Sac Valley Choral uh, Coalition and includes four performances. David is uh, directing each of the shows, and he also sings in one of the groups, and he's going to tell us a little bit about that later. But let's, let's start from the top. Tell us about Sac Sings. Sac Sings is a um, festival of 20 choirs in over four performances um, that has become kind of the destination. Uh, we pull choirs from all five counties, all the way from Amador, from, uh, uh, from Nevada County, and certainly four groups, uh, this time from Davis area. So we're very excited to uh, offer this as a showcase to uh, kind of give people a sampler, you know, kind of like going to the wine place with a sampler. Uh, this is a choral sampler, uh, all kinds of music, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun. A little bit of Grass Valley, a little bit of Davis, a yeah. little bit of, well, there's a lot of genres I want to get into that yeah, later, sure. but you've brought us a short video. Okay. So let's go ahead and watch that so people yeah. can see what we're talking about, and then okay. we'll get into some of the specifics. If you cue the video, please. Looks like a lot of fun, David. Yes, it is. Voices. So you were actually here two years ago, um, before the first show launched. Now we're you're coming up on year three of Sax Sings. What have you learned? What's changed in that time? We went into it with a lot of enthusiasm, and uh, and certainly uh, well warranted because so much talent is going on around the valley, and we wanted to showcase that talent. Mm -hmm. We kind of bit deeply into the apple the first year, <laughs> and um, we had. Uh, Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you, 20 groups and, and um, 
16 performances. Um, the second year we scaled back some to, uh, to really focus a little bit more. And then we did some, some talk. We wanted it to be a good experience for the singers, mm -hmm. especially. So we revamped things. One thing we learned was that we needed to have it earlier in the year, uh, before the spring season, so that people really could showcase their upcoming concerts. So the audience members get a little taste, and then they can see, oh, I want to go see that concert and that concert. Like an appetizer. An appetizer, <laughs> exactly. And then, and then we moved, wanted to move the, um, the festival closer. We were at the Harris Center, and uh, we've moved it now to uh, Sacramento City College Performing Arts Center. Beautiful facility right in the middle of the Sacramento Valley. So. Nice, nice. Now, uh, I was reading through the, the website earlier today, and uh, in there it describes choral music as some of the, you know, the best undiscovered music there is. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's, it's not known as well as y you would hope it would be? You know, that was really the, the motivation for starting this, was all these great choirs. Uh, um, the Vocal Arts Ensemble right here in Davis, marvelous group. Nobody knew about them. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to get that exposure out, and it's still a challenge. Uh, you know, we, we advertise. There's a lot of competition for music, but, uh, but that's what we're growing uh, toward, is to really showcase um, and, and let people cross-pollinate, people that would come to, um, uh, come to hear, uh, let's say, Barbershop, don't know how wonderful um, modern art music is, and and classical music people are finding out about Americana and and uh, and fun music that many of the other groups. So and that was one of the things that really surprised me. So I, I am a huge fan of vocal arts ensemble, yeah. and I just want to mention the other uh, Yolo County groups sure. that are participating, which is the Davis Chamber Choir, the Davis uh, Choral, and from Woodland the Woodland Chamber Singers. So yeah. we have four groups from Yolo County. Um, the website also described a wide range, they're performing a wide range of music, classical, jazz, barbershop, Americana. Okay, I didn't know that choral groups touched on all that. <laughs> yes, they do. And you sing with, tell me again, you, the I Grass Valley I sing with the band? Grass Valley Male Voice Choir. We sing what's called Americana. So we sing show tunes, we sing um, traditional American music. This time we're doing an all spiritual um, thing that's shaker music and, and African American uh, spirituals and so forth. And uh, but normally we sing uh, also British songs because our heritage is a uh, Cornish carol choir. Okay. Um, so um, the miners came and made you know made this choir 150 years ago. Right, so singing yeah. down in the mines. Yeah. Um, Rita Hosking, who's a, a world famous folk singer here in Davis, mm -hmm. um, sings out of that heritage as well. Ah. And so she's mm -hmm. she's told a lot of great stories about that. Um, I'm going to read a quote to you. Mm -hmm. It's a little known fact, but there are dozens of independent choruses in the Sacramento Valley. A few are widely known, drawing thousands to their concerts each year. But what of the rest? Nearly 900 singers, 900 singers. That's right. All right. So um, tell us a little bit about, because, because there's four different shows within this event. How yeah. does that work? Yeah. So the 20 choirs are divided up into groups of five. So Saturday afternoon, Sunday, uh, Saturday evening, Sunday afternoon, and Sunday evening. Uh, four shows. They're each independent. Um, and each one has a variety, the, you know, a, a different music. So there might be a classical and a barbershop and Americana and a jazz and, a, uh, and an ensemble singer uh, kind of thing in each concert. So, so you've mixed it up. So we've mixed it up yeah. quite a bit. And, yeah. uh, and so each one's a separate, um, separate entrance and uh, separate tickets. So yeah, we're uh, we actually, our executive director is offering a prize to those that come to all four concerts. So he's calling it the executive club or something like that. So. Uh, I'm going to have you talk about how one gets tickets and how that works with mm -hmm. four different shows. Um, I'll just tell our, our viewers that tickets are available at uh, saxings.org mm -hmm. and you can get more information That's there. Right. But But how, do, how is that going to work? Yeah, well, we offer our tickets through uh, a, a ticket agency mm -hmm. called Eventbrite mm -hmm. and you'll find the link on the website and right. the tickets uh, menu. And, uh, and so you can go there and order the tickets, um, one concert, two concerts, three. Uh, there's no discount for you know, coming to multiple ones. It's, mm -hmm. it's a really a bargain price anyway. So. Right, so each show is a, is a Yeah, so each one's ticket. separate. Okay, so um, what would you like to, to highlight? What's, what's really exciting you going into your third year of direct, producing and directing these shows? 
I am, I am so excited. We added last year uh, a, uh, where all the singers sing at the end. Um, not all 900, <laughs> so the, the, the building would fall over. But all, but all, all of those from that, that concert show. show up, 200, 250 singers gather on the same, uh, stage. We sing Let There Be Peace on Earth. You heard a, a, a piece of it from last year. It was a commission piece that um, we did, uh, had commissioned just for us, and we have the exclusive rights for it, so nobody else does that version. And, and then we all sing the audience sings together as well at the end. So it's, it brings people into that experience uh, in a a wonderful, wonderful way. So that to me is the highlight. Each time it just gives me chill bumps, I start crying. <laughs> One of those goosebump yeah. moments, yeah. right? You know, I asked you a question earlier and you said that's an interesting point. Um, choral music hasn't seen the big elevation or the big bump that, that acapella got, for example. Mm -hmm. With acapella a few years ago, we had movies like Pitch Perfect. There's been TV shows that, that really elevated it. Mm -hmm. um, wh what do you think is going on with choral music? Do you think there's an opportunity like that in the wings? Well, you know, it's, it's a spectrum. And uh, acapella music, for instance, I'm actually developing a seminar on this topic. Yeah. Uh, acapella music started way back in Gregorian chants. You think about it, that was, you know, the, in the milieu of religious um, worship ago. and so forth, mm -hmm. 200,000 years ago. And it has evolved through barbershop, through jazz singing, through, um, through a variety of choral milieus. So, you know, the, the, the thing we're hearing, you know, the college uh, groups and, you know, right. uh, Harvard and, and so forth and Wiffle Puffs and whatever they're called. Pentatonics. And pentatonics yeah. are big. So we hear a little of that in our concerts and that's a part of a part of what we want to lift up and we hope people, it'll draw people kind of like the Harry Potter of, <laughs> of, uh, of music is that they'll come for one thing and, and understand that, find that there's just a wonderful variety of music that uh, you can enjoy. So, Good. Well, take a minute here and tell me a little bit about the group you sing with. Okay, so I sing with uh, Grass Valley Male Voice Choir, mm -hmm. and that is, uh, let's say, the group was founded 150 years ago during the gold rush, oh, wow. when the Cornish men came over to work in the deep gold mines. And um, th that group was in existence for, well, actually there were several groups. They ultimately became one group, became kind of famous. They sang on the radio and NPR, uh, did a recording in the deep mines, mm -hmm. uh, clear up through the 1960s, early 60s. And the, the gold mines closed and the choir faded away, but it got uh, revived in the, uh, in the 90s. And so we're about to celebrate our 20th year. We're going to Cornwall next year as a... Uh, um, uh, to be a part of a festival there. Wow, that's pretty Cornish exciting. Choirs, so. I, I can just imagine those voices down in the mines, and that kind of mm. gives me goosebumps thinking yeah. about that. Yeah, <laughs> it is a sound. All it's right. a d unique sound. We're almost out of time, okay. believe it or not. So anything else you would like to tell people about the upcoming Sax Sings event, April 23rd and 24th? Yep, April 23rd and 24th. Get on the website, saxsings.org, and you'll find everything you need. All the groups are listed there and uh, how to get the tickets. And we really hope that you'll get out and see the, uh, what music has to offer. I mean, it's not rock music. It's not going to be rock and roll, although there are a couple <laughs> groups like the uh, uh, Sacramento Gay Men's Choir that do a pretty raucous show. So uh, it's a lot of fun, and you will not be sorry. Sounds like a lot of fun. David Loofborough, thanks for being our guest today here on In the Appreciate Studio. It. Thank you. Once again, I'm Autumn. I've been hosting you on uh, In the Studio here today, and be sure to turn in, tune into the whole archive, dctv.davismedia.org. Thanks for watching.